Courtney, and this is our van, Dee Dee. She's a 2012 Mercedes Sprinter, long wheelbase, and she's bright orange, as you can see. This content is sponsored by Outdoorsy. Through Outdoorsy, you can rent your camper van out to make extra cash, and you can rent a van to try van life before you commit. So we've been living here for the last six months and traveling Europe for the last three, and we're currently uh, in the not so sunny south of Spain. <laughs> we thought whilst we're here, we'll give you a bit of a tour, uh, show you the ins and outs, the overall design and layout that we went for. And then if you stick around to the end, we'll tell you how much we spent on her because that's the juicy bit that everyone loves to know. <laughs> Welcome to our entrance vestibule, as we like to call it. This is our um, storage area as you come in through the side door of the van, which basically becomes our dumping ground. Um, kick off your shoes. We've got shoe storage here for about two to three pairs of shoes and a shovel. Um, we've got mats here that we can pop outside so that we're not always bringing in dirt and sand and things into the van. We also have a thermal curtain here um, that we can close off the space so that if there's people outside in the front then they're not always looking in when we're chilling in the back. It's also really good for keeping it cool in here when it's hot outside or keeping the heat in when it's cold outside. Um, we have storage in between the two seats so we decided to change out our two seats for uh, in the front to a single swivel seat um, which we actually never use so everyone else seems to love their swivel seat but we never use ours really um, but yeah we have storage in the middle and that just basically gives us a little bit of extra space to store things that we use on a day or weekly basis so things like hose toilet fluid and um, all that kind of stuff we also then have storage behind the driver's seat so we've got coats behind there camping chairs um, an extra piece of table that helps when we make the bed and also our paddles for our new exciting paddle boards even though we have never been paddle boarding before <laughs> We opted for a full height wardrobe in our van so that we had loads of storage space for clothes and shoes and things. We don't have that many, but I would say that I probably do have slightly more hanging space than James in here. Um, he does take up a lot more of the shelf space though, so I think we even out in that in that respect. Um, but yeah, we wanted to make sure that we didn't look like napkins all the time. We had um, a decent amount of hanging space here. We also keep things like our table in here for when we're sitting outside, somewhere to put your wine is very important. And then we also have um, a drying rack that we just got from Ikea that we can put outside and let our um, like laundry air out basically when we're in a beautiful spot. And then there's space for um, shoes and things at the bottom. Everything just kind of get dumped in there. This is our toilet. Um, as you can see, as me for scale, it is a pretty decent size. It's about the same size as a normal shower cubicle, just a little shallower due to this back wall being slightly curved. So our shower cubicle was something that we were not prepared to compromise on. Basically, we knew from the off that we wanted a design that allowed us to have a separate cubicle that we could shower in, as opposed to having like an outside shower or a solar shower. Um, this cubicle is about 80 centimeters by 75 centimeters i think we got the shower tray from a local caravan shop just in leeds it's just like a plastic material so it's really lightweight um and then we opted for like a bit of an unusual design on the wall so instead of having plain white hygiene board we used a company called wet wall works um, and they're basically like tongue and groove cladding for bathrooms and we love these walls, we think they're great. We also opted for a self-contained toilet rather than having a cassette that um, kind of pulls out from outside. Um, so this is the Thetford Porta Potty Excellence with the manual flush. Um, and basically when we want to shower, we just lift the whole unit out and pop it in front of the wardrobe. And then when we want to empty it, we do the same thing. Um, we also opted for an Eco shower head. So the shower head we have is from Eco Camel. And it basically means that we have the same amount of water pressure, but we use a fraction of the amount of water that you would in a normal household shower. Um, and with that, we've gone for a really, really long shower hose. So I think it's about three meters long, which sounds crazy, but the reason is we can lift the shower head out 
and basically put it out of the side door so we can shower outside if we want to or we can use it to you know wash off sandy feet if we've been on the beach the final thing in here is that we decided not to have a shower door we didn't really think about building one until we'd built the frame of the shower so we opted to just have a shower curtain that pulls across and to be honest that works really well for us so all in all we love our shower room and it's not something we would compromise on if we did another build also meeks gets pretty smelly so it's pretty important in here Welcome to our kitchen, my favourite part of the van. Um, as a professional chef that I am, I really didn't want to compromise on the amount of worktop space that we have. So as you can see, we have a huge unit on this side, which I think is like a metre and a quarter long, metre and a half. Um, these are from Ikea. They're about four, just under four centimetres thick, I think. So they're pretty heavy. I think. The, the two that we have I think are around 25 kilograms on the road, which is pretty heavy for a van. Um, but as you'll also see, we do not have a plumbed in like gas cooktop in here. Um, and the reason for that is because we wanted to keep the space as it is, and then also we wanted to be able to have a portable cooktop that we could use if we want to sit outside and cook stuff. Um, which we keep in this huge drawer. So in this side, we've also got um, two big cupboards underneath here. One has like pots and pans and things in. The other one has like random stuff, like a toolbox and like dry food, Tupperwares, random bits and bobs. Um, we have our cutlery drawer here, um, coasters, tea towels. And then underneath we have our isotherm 65 litre fridge. And for us, I would say this is the perfect size. So we can fit like a full week's food shop in here with a little bit of clever Jenga. Um, definitely wouldn't go smaller than this if I was gonna recommend anything to people, get a big fridge. Cause the less often you have to find services and go to a shop, it's just a godsend. The one downside to having a smaller than normal house fridge is that once you've got a full week's food shop in there, you can really only fit like two beers in there at a time. And yeah, Meeks was not very happy about that. Over on this side, we have another um, kitchen unit. So I think this one is about a metre long. Um, and we have a huge sink in here. Um, this is another thing we actually struggled to find. Like normal, lightweight camper van sinks are like itty bitty. Like you can't get anything in them. And we were really lucky. So we found this. I think it's an old Fetford that we found on eBay. Um, so yeah, we're, we're really happy with this and it matches our taps beautifully so again i think we got these on ebay um one of these is just like a normal tap um, and then this one has a drinking water filter on it as well so we can drink water straight from our um, fresh water tank and this one is a mini me of this one we bought them from separate sellers but you know they're like twins up here above this kitchen unit we have um, storage for all of our crockery and um, bamboo plates, bowls, um, cups and things like that. We have ginormous ceramic mugs because we are British and we do love a good cup of tea and we just found that enamel mugs were like one sip which is just not enough um, so we are risking it with the ceramic but so far we've only had one chip I think it's pretty good for six months down the line um on this one this is kind of empty um we need to go food shopping but this usually stores all of our like naughty food so snacks crisps bread all that kind of stuff over here above the sink we have um storage for like spices tea bags um toothpaste toothbrushes sitting here and washing up liquid and all that kind of stuff that we use every day and then moving down we have two cupboards underneath this unit one of them is has three shelves and it's full of like our pantry stuff so tins and pasta and all of that kind of dried goods and underneath here is all of our very messy um we have our bins recycling a normal bin and then all of our plumbing is under here as well which we'll talk you through in a little while So in our kitchen area, we have two control panels, one on this side and one on this side. You'd like to think that was good planning, but I think that's more just the fact that the wires for some of the control panels were shorter than the others, so they're on two sides. On this side is our electrics, 
So the first thing on the electric side is the remote control for the Max fan, which is above my head, if you can see it. Um, the Max fan's really cool because one, it has a control so you can turn it on from bed, and two, it also has dual direction function, so it can pull air in to make it nice and breezy, or it can pull air out when Courtney makes a bad smell. Um, it's got loads of speed settings as well. It's also got temperature control. Um, and one of the best things is it's got a rain uh, sort of cover. That's probably the right word. Uh, so you can have this on when it's absolutely pelting it down outside. Um, whereas most other ones have like rain sensors and they turn off and close. Uh, so this is really cool for us. We really enjoy it. Next on the control panel is our Victron smart battery monitor. Uh, this is the BMV712, which connects to a shunt in our battery bank. This basically tells us how much of our batteries we've got left. And today we're on 99.9% .9 because it's been sunny and now it's cloudy. Um, usually we don't drop our batteries down to below like 90% on a normal day, 85% if we're charging both laptops and charge packs and GoPros and things like that. We have three 90 amp hour batteries. Uh, these are Vata um, power frame batteries. They've got some special technology in them that uh, mean that they degrade slower than most AGM batteries. Um, they're really quite cheap as well compared to like lithium ion and things like that. They are quite heavy, which is the downside, but again, the cost to weight ratio for us was something that we definitely want to go for. Um, these batteries power pretty much everything in the van. Um, they power on a normal basis the fridge, the Wi-Fi, the lighting, the water pump, the water heater, um, and the fan, and then any devices that we have charging. Uh, those batteries are powered from uh, three different sources. The first one being solar panels. We have 300 watts, uh, so that's three 100 watt panels that are wired in series I think so. series. It's series. Um, that then feed into our batteries uh, through our MPPT solar controller. We then also have the ability to charge these offshore power so when we're parked up at a campsite we can just plug it in and then that provides power to the batteries and we also have then the ability to use a 240 volt plug that we have there. Finally, we also charge our batteries when we're driving um, because we have a split relay charger that engages when it notices the voltage and it sends the residual charge from the um, alternator all the way down to our batteries that are in the back bench there. So the final two things on our um, control panel on this side are the light switches and the 240 volt plug. The light switches, we have two of them. Uh, one is split for the three backlights that are in the living room and one is split for the two lights at the entrance of the vestibule. As you'll see, one does one, and then you'll go a bit darker, one does the other. So we like living, um, and one of the things that we really wanted to do was not die when we are in the van. So we've installed a carbon monoxide alarm for any sort of problems with our heater, uh, diesel heater, or any gas leaks that we've got from our little gas canisters. We kind of wanted to know before we kind of passed out and so on my left, we have our second control panel, which it does our water and heating needs. So our heating is done by the Webasto Thermotop C300 system, which um, is now no longer available from uh, stockists because they discontinued it. There is a newer model, which looks a little bit simpler, actually. Our heating and water system is completely run off a diesel system, so we have no gas at all. What we have is a separate diesel tank in our kitchen. Um, that feeds a little unit that sits underneath the van, kind of underneath the sink. Um, that diesel is fed into there to create combustion and heat. Um, and then what we have feeding into that unit is a coolant system. So we have a little reservoir under the sink that when the unit engages, feeds the coolant through under the van into the unit. And then that unit creates heat, which heats the coolant. Up. That coolant then passes around in the system and gets really hot. And then to get heat into the van when it's cold outside, we turn our fans on and then the coolant passes in front of the fans, creating hot air. 
when we want hot water, we have a heat exchanger under the sink. It's a little unit about yay big. Um, and what happens there is when the coolant is hot and we turn our water on, the water passes through the heat exchanger um, and it's coiled around um, a coolant um, flow. That coolant heats the water up to like really hot and then that comes out of the heat exchanger through the pipes up into our sink if we want to wash the dishes or into the shower if we want to have a nice hot shower. So the system I've just explained, that took like three days to install with the caravan engineer who didn't know what he was doing. Um, but we got it in and it works. And we're really happy with how quickly we get hot water and how quickly we can get a lot of hot air coming into the van. Like we don't need it now, but when we were living in the UK in December, bloody freezing and uh, that heater was on all the time. Uh, it doesn't use that much diesel anyway. So we have a controller for our heaters and blowers. Um, and then we also have a controller for our thermostat so we can control the temperature and when the heaters kick in and turn off. Um, we also have a water pump here which will turn our water pump on and off. And then this one is our final one which um, monitors how much fresh and wastewater we have in our tanks. It's important to let you know that we have a underslung fresh water tank that sits underneath the shower here. If that's 100 litres um, and it lasts us probably around four days if we're washing up three times a day, making cups of tea, drinking water and showering. We then have a 75 litre wastewater tank which is at the back of the van underneath there that our sink and our shower feed into and it goes in and just drops into the tank. We then empty that out when we find somewhere that is suitable to do so. So above the electric um, control panel we have two cupboards. Uh, these house our electrical equipment and our board games and important documentation and our Wi-Fi. So our Wi-Fi router is in this cupboard here. Um, I'll not show you it because it's behind lots of stuff but essentially we have a, a, a mount here for a little um, Wi-Fi signal creator uh, that's a Huawei system um, and that goes up through little wires here onto a 4G signal booster antenna that's on our roof. Um, it's a low profile thing so it sits underneath our roof rack. Uh, it's black as well so it fits in with the decor of the van. Um, and what that does is it'll take any 4G or 3G signal it can find, boost the strength of it so we get quite good internet speeds and then it sends it down into the um, receiver system here which then creates a Wi-Fi si signal within our van that you can tether up to 10 different devices on. It's boss. Welcome to our living room. Please sit down. So this is our living room, slash office, slash dining room, slash bedroom. Not many you can say that, can you? Um, so one of the things that we really, really didn't want to compromise on was desk space because I work three days a week for my marketing agency back in the UK. Courtney also does freelance projects three days a week. So we really needed a big space that we could both work from. This table is gigantic. Um, it's over a meter long, it's about 70 centimeters wide. So it allows me to have this seat, Courtney to have this seat, slash that seat, slash this seat. Um, and we can actually work and not get in each other's way. If we both have calls, Courtney sometimes goes and sits in the front um, because my voice can be quite loud, um, I've been told. Uh, so yeah, this is this is our office space, and it works so well for us. Um, it's it me it means that we have to make the bed up every day, but that sacrifice of being able to have this much space and this much living area is is one that we are more than happy to make. So for those of you that are interested in the dimensions of our living slash dining slash office slash sleeping area, uh, the length is just over two meters, so two two meters ten and the width is about 1 meter 70 which is uh, bigger than a queen size bed uh, which means that Courtney can be all over that side and me all over this side and we don't actually have to touch each other which is lovely sometimes when she smells. <coughs> um, the foam is from uh, efoam.co.uk and it is 10 centimeters thick and about 50 centimeters wide. Uh, these are all one big uh, cushion, uh, same on the other side and at the back here as well. We 
got the backs tapered slightly so they're 10 centimeters at the bottom but eight at the top because if we didn't the seating would be so upright you'd almost be over um, so that kind of helps um, the concave of the van um, we did make a mistake with the foam to start with and we ordered foam that was far too thick so we were literally sitting like this um, which wasn't very comfortable so our table um, as I mentioned earlier is, is really big um, it's also on what's called a lagoon table leg uh, which is just underneath to the left here uh, that allows the table to swivel in all different directions which we absolutely love because you can move it out of the way completely um, you can dance or get dressed or uh, Courtney can shout at me um, but the one thing about it is that the fixing that we put it on uh, isn't really thick enough wood for it to have a sturdy um, support so it kind of leans to one side which is why we bought this extra table leg <coughs> um, that kind of stops it from being able to swivel but um, at the moment especially when we're working it's more important to have a sturdy table than a swivelly table when we want to make this into a bed the tabletop comes off the leg and the leg comes out and we push this down and it sits on these slats that are just below me here we then add the extra piece of table which we showed you earlier behind the wardrobe and that then makes this whole area um, the same height when that's happened we then pull the cushions in and the back ones slot down into the space to make a nice big mattress space and in a bit we'll put a little montage of how we make the bed um, people sometimes like think oh I don't want to have to make the bed every day because it's a faff um, but once you've got the system down it takes Courtney about 2 minutes 30 seconds um, so we'll show you how she does that in a bit so as this is a really small space one of the things that we wanted was it to feel really bright and airy um, so we tried to do that through two ways one was through lighting and the other was through windows I'm going to talk to you now about what we use for them in our living area so we have three spots above us in the living area which are really bright when it's dark outside so we also have two spotlights these are the ones here um, you can see that they can move in any direction uh, and we use these sort of when it's a bit darker or it's night time so that it feels a bit more cozy and we can also use them as reading lights uh, especially when one of us wants to go to sleep earlier than the other so when we bought Didi there were no windows in the rear cargo space at all um, so we changed that and we added five we added one in the sliding door two in the kitchen and two in the living room uh, this makes it super bright in here as you can tell today it's quite cloudy but there's so much light coming in through these windows one of the other things that it does is it can make it either really hot or really cold depending on whether it's really hot or really cold outside because they let in or out loads of heat so what we decided to do to combat that was um, get some custom blinds from blinds to go um, these have thermal properties so they stop hot or cold air coming in or hot or cold air going out uh, and they just work on a little concertina just like this and they block out pretty much all the light apart from a little slit down the side but we genuinely don't notice it at all really so the windows and the blinds are actually some of the some of the most favorite thing on the van they let in so much light and they're also privacy tinted so no one can really look in unless they're like properly peering in like uh, window twitchers and the blinds like keep heat in so well uh, definitely something I would recommend strongly for other van builds so one final thing in our living room that we didn't want to compromise on was the ability to charge our devices so if you join me down here you'll see we've got these little uh, USB ports that can take anything that we really need charge from phones to GoPros to battery packs to anything really so above our heads in the living room uh, we have yet more storage uh, storage is something that you absolutely must 100% need in a van because uh, it's a tiny space and you need to make use of every space so what we've done is we've put um, full length cupboards above our heads uh, and in here we have our laundry cupboard because we didn't actually think about where we we're going to put our dirty laundry so it's in here uh, next to that is our cleaning cupboard with a little USB hoover and uh, a window vac 
and cloths and toilet paper for number twos and then on the other side are leisure wear and cycling wear cupboards so the first one is mine uh, which is really unorganized so I'm not going to show you and the second is Courtney's and it's filled to the brim of leisure wear because that is what Courtney loves to wear Welcome to the cab. Uh, this is where the driving happens, surprisingly. Um, it's a bog standard cab, we haven't really done much to it. Came with a reversing camera, but um, just talking about security that we've got with the van, we have a stop lock on the steering wheel, which stops people driving away with the van. We have two security cameras, one at the back of the van, and one we haven't quite decided where we're gonna keep it yet, so that thieves, if they watch this, don't know where it is. And, um, these are from uh, NEOS, um, they're USB powered, so um, we can just put them with a charge pack anywhere really, they're magnetic as well so they can stick to anything. Um, and we also have a GPS tracker on the van, so uh, a little device that we can text and it'll tell us where the van is. Um, so if we leave it and we want to check in on it, we can do just that. Thieves. Mm. Steal someone else's van. No, don't steal anyone else's Wait. van. <laughs> don't steal any vans. <laughs> retrospectively decided to build a garage area what we refer to as the garage area one downside i suppose to not having a fixed bed is that like when you have a fixed bed you have loads of storage space underneath we obviously do have the benches which we have loads of stuff in but we didn't have a way of accessing all of that storage from the back so we want to get in the bench we have to lift all the cushions off all the scatter cushions and mess everything up um, so we decided to cut this little garage space um, so we have two little cubbies in here which basically means that we can access like rock tacks, walking booths, cycling gear, we've got chucks in here, level and blocks, helmet, hammock, all that kind of stuff, awning which now if we want to we can pull out from the back which makes our lives a lot easier. Now, you're probably wondering why there's a big piece here. And because we added it retrospectively, there's a strut here that's supporting the um, bench frame, so we had to leave this middle piece. But it actually became a perfect place to have a little magnet, so it's too shifty. But yes, think about that if you're going to do that build. Think about how you can access your garage and sweep. We are outside the van and we just wanted to show you kind of what the windows look like from the outside because we think they look really slick so we got them from van pimps um which is a uk company and basically they make windows um that are specifically designed for these panels within a sprinter van so they match like the curvature of the van and they're totally flush which i think makes it gives it a really nice finish um, and obviously on this side we have three so it's pretty cool we think and then on the other side we obviously have two we were going to put one where the shower cubicle was just so that it matched but we didn't really feel like spending an extra 150 200 pounds just for just for the look and feel of it at the back end of the van here we have our electric hookup point it's a little cobwebby because we barely use it to be honest we thought we were going to end up being on campsites like once a week or once every couple of weeks but the reality is that our electric setup and the solar um charges our batteries like perfectly so we only go to a campsite if we want the luxury basically of being able to have hot showers and um yeah like the security of it if we're in a city um, so this actually doesn't get used as often as we thought so down here on the driver's side we have the inlet for our fresh water not to be confused with grey water because i have accidentally emptied all of the fresh water in the past james is not very happy about that 
Um, and then moving slightly along, we have the exhaust for our um, diesel heating and hot water system here. And just behind this back wheel is the outlet for our wastewater as well. So you just have a little turn on it and all the water pulls out. Very easy. And we got those from a company in Yorkshire, Barrett Tanks. And they were great. They um, custom made them to the sizes that we wanted and fitted them underneath the van for us. So I would definitely recommend those guys. <laughs> so <laughs> obviously, as you can see, we also have um, a roof rack fitted to our van with this back ladder. Um, it was custom built for us, so it has um, perfect fitment around where our max fan is. And they also um, fitted our solar panels as well, so our solar panels are fixed directly onto the roof rack. Um, this was from SEV roof racks, um, also based in Yorkshire, I think they're in Clitheroe. Um, so yeah, it's a full length roof rack and we basically store our bikes up there, um, our paddle boards, We also have a roof bag, so if we need to store anything extra up there, we can do. Basically, it gives us loads of extra storage options, um, so we can just ratchet strap everything down with the more hobbies that we take on as we travel. So, we know you are wondering, well, maybe you're not wondering. <laughs> If you're still watching. <laughs> if you're still watching, you might be wondering how much it actually cost us to convert this from an orange metal shell into this beautiful home on wheels. She's a beautiful lady, isn't she? She is beautiful. A million pounds! <laughs> One million squillion <laughs> trillion pounds. <laughs> no, um, it was, well, Dee Dee herself cost. Around 7,000 pounds, we, we think. Um, so she was about six and a half on her own, but she needed a little bit of um, TLC. So yep. she had a dent in the bonnet from a previous life and a couple of the brackets under the bonnet needed um, a bit of like sealing and welding. And the door didn't close properly, did she? So they, we had that fixed as part of um, the sale fee. Yeah. So the cost of all the renovation stuff that we spent on her outside of the van costs and actually a breakdown and some other things like that was? Around 13 to 15,000. We don't really know. Yeah, we logged costs up until about halfway through the build and then got lazy we got lazy and there was a lot of miscellaneous wicks and being receipts that we basically couldn't categorize into anything it's like 100 pound wicks was like i don't know what that yeah. was for but i mean this is based on us starting as complete amateurs bear that in mind we had no tools to yep. start with we didn't have a workshop or anything so we had to buy like a workbench and all those kind of things Yep. to even be able to start and we got some tools stolen as well when our shed got broken into so we yeah. had to replace them so yeah you can do it cheaper and still get this finish and i think we would do it cheaper now if we were to do this again yep. because you know when you don't know what you're doing you are going to buy too much material you might buy the wrong thing and then you've got to replace it yeah all that kind of thing you're going to break a lot of drill bits so buy a lot more drill bits than what you need yeah <laughs> but overall that was about what we wanted to spend on her. It was yeah. probably a little more, yeah. but we were expecting that cost. We were prepared to put in basically what was the equivalent of a house deposit yeah. because this bit was going to become our first home that we owned together. Exactly. So, yeah, so basically that's the cost. Um, we did 99.9% .9 of it ourselves, apart from the windows because we had to get them resealed. Um, and we got some help with the heating system, but we are complete novices. Um, we couldn't wire a plug, we couldn't put up a shelf without arguing before we started this. So if we can do it... <laughs> Literally anyone could do this. So, yeah. And we're really happy with it, like we love her. Yeah. And people and we say hope she you looks do. nice, so... <laughs> we hope you like her too. If you do, then give it a thumbs up. Oh uh, yeah, and all that jazz. And, and all that jazz. Subscribe and... <laughs> like... Do the finger dance. 
<laughs> Peace out. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> Why am I waving like this? <laughs> eh, 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 eh. Bye. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that video. If you hadn't noticed, we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van. It has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams, also 25 video tutorials which are specifically for the ebook buyer. Creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project, but I really believe, and I've seen it time and time and time again, that with the right information, anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.